I think fans of the V1 may not really appreciate the, the upgrade to the V2 because if you really appreciated the natural feeling of this shoe, the road feel and the lightweight, uh, yeah, you, you may not appreciate where this shoe has gone. And In today's shoe comparison review, we've got a battle of the Hyperion Maxes. So we've got the original version, Hyperion Max 1, up against the brand new Hyperion Max 2. So we're gonna go through their differences, their key features, and their similarities. And hopefully from that, that's gonna give you guys a great indication to see if this one is the right upgrade for you. But before we get into it, and if you guys wanna support this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So checking out our quick specs here, now what is firstly jumping out to me is certainly the weight difference. So it's had a big increase in weight, the V2 over the V1, but can you actually feel that on the foot? Well, it doesn't actually feel that much of a difference. So it looks pretty bad on paper, but on the foot, it doesn't feel like that much. Certainly this one feels lighter and more nimble, but not that much. So not as bad as what the stats say. So it must be a really well-balanced shoe, this V2, because it still doesn't feel heavy on the foot for me. So same price point here in Australia. However, this one did jump up in the US by $10. Now also with different stack heights here, so that the V2 has got a much bigger stack than what you have in the V1. Can you feel that on the foot? Yes, you can. You do feel a little bit taller in this version. Uh, now in the drops, there's a couple of mil difference there, but I can't really tell the difference. Uh, so in our uppers here, so there is a lot of similarities here, but a few differences. But the materials obviously are different in the uppers. So what we've got in the V1, we've got a, a stretch woven material. So it's not a mesh. However, the breathability in this shoe is quite good, but it's a really tight woven material. Uh, it, it is a little bit flexible, but certainly not as flexible as the engineered mesh that they use in this shoe. So this one, excellent breathability, and certainly a lot more flexible and accommodating. Now, where these shoes are really similar is around the uh, the heel or the, around the heel counters here. So both have really, really solid heel counters, uh, and both have pretty much the same shape of, of an Achilles flare, as you can see there. Now, in the padding department, pretty much got exactly the same amount of padding. Nothing has changed there. Now where the differences come is certainly into the tongue. So in the original version, we've just got a pretty thin tongue. It's got a couple of pads on it. However, it's not a gusseted tongue and I have got some folds inside mine where I haven't, where I've obviously laced it up and haven't had the tongue uh, nice and flat. In the new version though, we get a really nice stretch knit tongue that is a gusseted tongue that actually doesn't move anywhere. Uh, also, we've got some different laces in each version. So we've got some pretty thick ribbon type laces uh, in the V1. Still, I've had no issues with those coming undone. They are probably a little bit long, but in the new version, they've got those notch laces. These are amazing laces. They really help you cinch your foot down and get a really good lockdown in this shoe. They're like the laces that they use in the Vaporfly, the Alpha Fly, and also the new Asics Meta Speed. So these laces are really amazing. Uh, now, locked in in these two shoes, I haven't had an issue in either shoe, so really good there. Uh, in the fit, these two shoes fit for me exactly the same, so both true to size. And in the width, in the toe box, they feel about the same as well. It's probably a little bit more accommodating uh, in the newer version, so in the V2, and that's just because I think of the material that they're using, because this material is certainly a lot more flexible than uh, what you're going to get in the V1. Step in comfort of both shoes is still pretty good, but I think you get a little bit more cushion feeling in this one, and that stretch knit tongue certainly feels like it hugs the foot down a little better. But build quality uh, in Brooks shoes, as always, it's always excellent. So we know outsoles here, so I'm guessing that Brooks use the same rubber compound in both shoes. So the only real difference here uh, is pretty much just the tread pattern of where they've put uh, the rubber on the bottom of the shoe. But the real differences here uh, is probably the uh, the exposed speed bolt plate that you can see in this version. So you can see the big window and they've got a big crevice cut out through the middle of the shoe. So that's obviously going to feel like this midsole is going to let this midsole splay a little bit and probably add a little bit more softness to the ride. And you can see that exposed uh, speed bolt plate there. But historically this rubber it actually wears down quite well so it's really durable this brooks rubber and in the grip department i've had no issues there 
And in our midsole, so this is where the big differences start to happen. So in the V1, they use the original like DNA flash. So that's the, the racing responsive foam. So it's just a full slab of that. There is no plate in this shoe. However, rigidity wise in this shoe, so it's still a pretty, to have to not have a plate, it's still like a pretty rigid shoe. However, it de definitely have got lots of flex there, but it's still this foam, it's actually, because this foam's quite firm, it actually has got some good snapback, as you can see there. And I'll compare that to the V2 in a minute, but no plate. Uh, Geometry-wise, they have got a four-foot rocker as well, so the rapid roll tech is what Brooks call it. However, it is certainly not as significant as what you can feel in the V2. And obviously the V2 here, so we, we got that much bigger stack, uh, as you remember, but they have got a the DNA. V2, so the brand new foam. So Brooks claimed that this one is 10% more responsive uh, than the V1. And I think from running in both these shoes, I'd probably agree with that as well. So this one certainly feels a bit zippier. But within this shoe, so this one, as I mentioned before, it's got a plate in it. It's a speed vault plate. It's not a carbon plate. And I think it feels, it's like a plastic plate. Uh, it could be a nylon plate. I've heard reports that it's a P-backs plate, but I'm not actually sure. But it's definitely not a carbon plate. And this shoe, it's still rigid, but it's still got some flex, as you can see there, but it's got a lots and lots of snap back, as you can see there. But if I can compare these two shoes in flexibility-wise, there's actually not that much difference in the either shoe. Certainly this shoe is easy to bend, but not as much as what you would think. Now, geometry-wise as well, this has got the rapid roll tech, but this one, because we've got a bigger stack, it's certainly much more evident out in the V2. And in our ride, so with the V1, so this is a responsive ride, uh, and it's quite a firm ride as well. So I get a lot of road feel in this shoe, but you feel very natural, it feels quite natural to run in. So it doesn't feel stiff or unnatural like a lot of them stiff rocket shoes feel. Very, very natural ride, very snappy, as I said, very responsive. There's no squish, there's no softness, and for me, I don't get any bounce out of this shoe. Just really firm, responsive, snappy. Now, in the V2, so same sort of feeling. So it's still a responsive ride, and it does feel quite firm. However, it feels there's a little more squish in this version, hence the bigger stack, and I think this this new nitro foam, or this new nit uh, DNA Flash 2 foam, is a little bit more compliant than, than the V1. But yes, still snappy, still responsive, still firm, but this is quite, you feel certainly much more rocker in this shoe. So this is, yeah, certainly you feel like you get more assistance in this shoe with this rapid roll tech, and it certainly feels smoother as well. Uh, the shoe does feel stiffer, so it definitely doesn't feel as natural as the other shoe. And obviously, you're not getting as much road feel in this shoe as what you are going to get in the V1. And best shoe, so for the V1, definitely for your fast days, your workouts, your up-tempo training, this one is going to be able to handle that. So really nice and light and responsive. You could probably race in this one as well, but certainly if you don't like the idea of racing in a carbon-plated shoe, now this one is a great, it's going to be a great option for that. Still really, access gears, crazy light, super responsive, uh, and feels really, really natural on the foot. You could probably use this for your everyday runs as well. However, I'd keep those pretty short because for me, it's probably a little bit too firm and there's just not enough cushion underfoot to take it too long. Whereas the V2, I think we've ticked that box, so I'd be quite happy with taking this one out in the long run. So I ran quite long in this one today and it felt really, really nice. So I really appreciated that extra stack and the rocker just to keep the legs ticking over on the on the long run. Also, again, this one is really suited to the your fast day. So your up-tempo workouts uh, and those high paces. Would you race in this shoe? I personally wouldn't. It's probably a little too heavy for a race day shoe, but certainly, uh, yeah, certainly your, your speed days and your up-tempo days now, what I've changed my mind a little bit on this shoe uh, from my first impressions review. It's 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 a, pr it's a little bit more versatile than I than I give it credit for because the more I run it, it's actually starting to feel better at the slower paces. So I definitely think you can take this out uh, for 
easy days and certainly those steady days, but for me it still feels better the faster you run in it. So it doesn't really feel clunky at the slower paces, which I thought it did uh, in my first few runs, but now it's starting to smooth out a bit. This, this foam is starting to break in it a little bit and it feels quite smooth at most paces. But again, this one's gonna shine mostly at the quicker stuff. So just wrapping it up here, so there was some interesting upgrades between these two shoes. So I think fans of the V1 may not really appreciate the, the upgrades of the V2 because if you really appreciated the natural feeling of this shoe, the road feel and the light weight, uh, yeah, you, you may not appreciate where this shoe has gone. And I think if you like that feeling, you should have a look at the Brooks Hyperion 2 because that shoe looks like the next version of this shoe. Now, where this shoe has gone, obviously lots of, lots of weight increase, a bigger stack, they've put a plate in it, a stiffer ride, but I think this one is gonna appeal to more runners out there. So I think it's the smoother ride and it's probably the more accommodating ride to the majority of runners, more over this one. So this is a naturalist type runner, your old school runner that loves that natural road feel, whereas this one, it's delving into the, the, the new school runner. It's a little bit softer, but it's just a little bit easy to run in uh, and a little bit more enjoyable as well. And so the V2 though is in a bit of a unique place. So I think it's still up, he's going up against the, the super trainers out there, but it's going against the trend of those shoes because they've all got plates, but they're super soft and squishy where as this shoe, it's got the plate in, it's got the big stack, but it's, it's as I said, it's a firm ride. But not everyone out there likes a soft, squishy ride. So it's gonna appeal to some people uh, those people who, who really appreciate a firm ride. So this could be a great option for you guys. And for you guys that love this shoe, see if you can snap this one up. There's some big discounts up on this one, or if you want a newer version of the same feeling of this shoe, I, again, I'd probably look at the Hyperion 2. But anyway, guys, that is it from me. I hope you liked that shoe comparison review. If you've got any questions, uh, regarding the, anything I didn't cover about these two shoes that you want me to clear up, please just drop that in the comments below. But anyway guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.